Today we're going to talk about engagement. No, not the boy meets girl, falls in love and pulls out a ring engagement. We're talking about engagement in e-learning. Did you know that there are two types of engagement? Behavioral engagement refers to the overt actions by a learner that's intended to improve learning. We're talking about click to reveals, drag and drops, producing text, gamification, and so forth. These are hands-on interactive activities that are often included specifically for learner engagement. The second type of engagement is psychological engagement. This refers to mental activities that help the learner achieve instructional goals. Examples include attending to relevant material, mentally organizing it into logical structures, and integrating it with prior knowledge. So, which type of engagement works best? To cut to the chase... No, not that kind of chase. Studies have found that psychological engagement, not behavioral engagement, leads to learning. Wait, are you saying that adding drag and drops and gamification to e-learning courses doesn't actually improve learning? Well, in some cases, yes, but don't delete your hard drives just yet. The problem with behavioral engagement is that these activities can add to a student's cognitive load and distract from effective learning. However, studies have shown that behavioral engagement that fosters psychological engagement can lead to learning, although it often requires instructional support to guide the learner's responses. To better understand engagement, let's take a look at the engagement grid. On one axis, we have psychological activity level, and on the other axis, we have behavioral activity level. Quadrant one includes activities that are high in behavioral engagement, but low in psychological engagement. This might include an educational narrative game with interesting characters and some cool challenges but that doesn't actually encourage relevant mental activity for learners to master the learning objectives. Quadrant two is what we like to call couch potato mode. Activities here are mindless and passive with little conscious learning going on. For effective learning to occur, we need to be in quadrants three or four. Quadrant three is mentally active with low behavioral activity this includes relevant graphics and examples. Contrary to popular belief, learners do not have to be behaviorally active to be learning. If you don't believe me, try convincing me that you didn't learn anything from this video. Ha, nice try. Finally, Quadrant 4 is both mentally and behaviorally active. For example, an e-learning course about car maintenance might have the learner teach back the lesson to an on-screen avatar. Or an e-learning course about human anatomy might show the learner a relevant diagram and have the learner type in the correct body parts. Interestingly, studies show that providing instructional support, in this case, providing the elements of a diagram, rather than having the learner create the diagram from scratch, is best for supportive learning. As you can see, engagement in e-learning is more than just drag and drops, fill in the blanks, and games. The more mentally active the learners are, regardless of how much physical activity they're doing, the more they'll actually learn. Now you know.